Some of the biggest newsbreakers in the college sports world are graphic designers in their early 20s. We'll explore why that is and what it means. Plus, Manchester United may be the next Premier League team to get penalized for overspending. Four people pulled off a major baseball card heist, and the WNBA is cooking. It's Thursday, July 11th. I'm Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. Manchester United is coming right up to the edge of the Premier League's profit and sustainability rules. The club posted a loss of $91.4 million in the first quarter of this year. That brings their three-year total to a loss of $348.4 million before accounting for the last three months of the 2023-24 season. The Premier League only allows a three-year total loss of $134.8 million. So that sounds like they are offsides by over $200 million, but Man U gets to factor in major deductions to that amount from its spending on infrastructure, women's soccer, youth development, community projects, and pandemic-related losses. Still, the losses are affecting the roster. The team loaned out Jaden Sancho and Donny Vandebeek to Bundesliga clubs earlier this year in an effort to stay within the EPL's rules. Jim Ratcliffe took over control of Man United in February, but the team is still feeling the echoes of the Glazer years. Over $2 million in vintage baseball cards were stolen from a Dallas trade show. The heist appears to have been a team operation in which three people distracted workers in the area by talking to them and showing them things on their phones, while a fourth, who had been stacking and rearranging chairs as if he worked at the venue, quietly walked over to a desk, picked up a briefcase, and walked out without anyone noticing. Inside that briefcase were six 1952 Mickey Mantle cards, a Willie Mays card from the same year, a 1967 Tom Seaver rookie card, and a 1916 Joe Jackson card, according to Collect. The owner of that impressive collection, Ashish Jane, is sure the thieves had been scouting them for a while and knew exactly which briefcase to take. There is security footage of the crime, but all the thieves are wearing hats, which makes their faces difficult to see. Authorities are hoping to get fingerprints off of the chairs handled by the person who took the briefcase. This is the second card theft of this magnitude this year. In May, 54 cards with a combined value of $2 million was stolen from a hotel. 52 of them were later found at the home of a hotel employee. The WNBA is breaking ground on and off the court. Yesterday, Aja Wilson was unveiled as the first WNBA athlete to be featured on the cover of a regular edition of NBA 2K. Angel Reese notched her record 14th straight double-double, 21 games into her career. Camila Cardoso has double-doubles in three of those games, making them the first rookie teammates to do that. And last week, Caitlin Clark became the first rookie in WNBA history to record a triple-double. Even with the second overall pick out for the season, the most anticipated rookie class in the league's history is delivering in a big way. I'm joined now by freelance culture and sports writer Jake Kring Schreifels. Welcome, Jake. Thanks so much, Owen. How are you? Great. Great to have you on. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, I'm really excited to, to be on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> you wrote a piece for us about how um, college sports graphic designers are becoming these this, like new class of college sports insiders focusing on these two who work for On3, Joe Tipton and Hayes Fawcett. What initially kind of tipped you off to this even being a phenomenon? Well, I have kind of been in the sports media world for a while. I used to work at some NFL teams, uh, at, or at least one NFL team, one at one major league baseball team, and kind of saw the way that graphic design was really kind of taking off of the last decade, really. Um, and it kind of dovetails with Joe and, and Hayes' own starts in the industry around 2014, 2013, kind of some early starts for them in terms of making graphics. But I think the way that the industry has been going is a lot of players use that as a way to accentuate their personal brands using both the universities that they're attending or even NFL NFL teams or professional teams that they're on using graphics. And then of course, obviously social media as a way to enhance their brands. So I was kind of aware of their start. Uh, so I, I, I went and did some digging and realized that over the last decade, they have really created themselves a nice little niche in this industry. And it's become almost its own type of thing for them. Um, it's, it's, it's a really fascinating case. Yeah. So yeah, let's get into what we're talking about here. So from, from my understanding from your piece, you know, you know, say um, someone's been recruited by Kansas as a you know football player, basketball player, and um, either, you know, out of high school or they're transferring 
And instead of just tweeting that out or letting people just find that out, you know, maybe the university announces it, they come out with this big splashy graphic um, that is unique to them and the school and the moment. So, um, yeah, just take us into like how this all works and, and why players are doing this. Yeah, so like you said, I think about a decade or so ago, the, the common thing to do was if you were a high school kid and you wanted to announce where you were going, you would get out your notes app <laughs> and maybe write, them, hey, I've, I've really thought about this and I've decided I'm down to five schools and here are the five schools and I'm going to post this on social media and try to get some engagement there. And at some point, Joe and Hayes and and some other teenagers around uh, that time, you know, 2014, I, I mentioned, had started to realize that there was more potential than just the notes app. And so they thought, well, if I make some graphics, if I just put a player, take a Google image and slap a couple graphics or slap a couple logos of the schools that they want to attend around their image, maybe it's a high school image or just an action, you know, baseball card or football card or something of that nature. I think they would actually like that a little bit more. It'd be a little bit more flashier. So they started doing this early into middle school, even high school. Hayes was an athlete, a three-sport athlete. He knew a lot of kids in his high school, very small town in Kinder, Louisiana, had a good relationship with some high schoolers there that were getting big offers. And so he thought, well, why don't I just extend my these opportunities to my fellow peers? And so it became this way for high schoolers to feel like they got a little bit more clout to what they were doing. I'm going to make this nice, cool looking graphic that looked kind of more professional than what I would do. And someone's noticing me. And now I'm going to be able to get a little more credibility when I announce this to the rest of the world. Yeah. I mean, this feels like it pretty quickly dovetails with the whole world of NIL just because, you know, if, if you're, like, if they're going to make the same amount of money or no money, um, depending on like how many social media followers they had and which schools they go to, um, I'm, obviously some of them still want that. It might be worth it to them, but you know, these, you said in your story, I think, um, there's, it opens with an anecdote of someone paying Joe Tippin was at $2,500 or something, something like that, uh, for one of these graphics. And you know, that's, that's not nothing, especially for a high schooler. Um, or, you know, even if you have to get that money from your parents saying like, Hey, mom and dad, could I have $2,000 for a, a nice graphic to say something that I could just announce to the world. So, but it feels like, you know, and, and I think some of them just want the cool graphic. They see it in other spots. Um, but it also makes me think this could be an investment for some of them of, I want the engagement. I want the followers. I want to feel like I'm a big deal so that other people treat me like a big deal. And that, you know, the $2,000 could come back to me tenfold. Right. It's all about kind of creating your own buzz, right? And name, image, and likeness is a big aspect of that. I think within the last three years, since it really became a, a thing after the, the Supreme Court ruling. So this was before NIL even came into existence. I think this was, they were, they were on the right trail, right? So that they, they, they could sense that something like this would be coming down the road in a way that people who are, you know, just in these small towns and Southern states and, and want something to, to feel like they are establishing themselves as athletes and also getting on the radars of other coaches, other programs that they put this out there. Well, they're down to five schools. Wow. I never even heard of this kid. Wow. He must be pretty important. Four star kid. Wow. Out of, you start to, you start to see the way that that can help build your brand. And then that obviously pays dividends down the road when you start to get more sponsorships, promotions from other companies and brands uh, in, in NIL deals too. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that example of I'm down to five schools, you know, Clearly, that could be a, uh, you know, a not so subtle offer to those schools to say like, hey, you know, if uh, I'm thinking about you, but you might have to sweeten the deal, you know, whether that's through scholarship money or, you know, pre NIL, they could only offer so much. Now they can offer plenty. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it could effectively be a negotiating tool as well. Yeah. And it's funny because I, I, I think a lot of times you, you would think about graphics not really making too much of a buzz uh, outside of just social media. But I, but I will say that because the recruiting industry is such a heavily followed thing in, especially in the Southeast region, Texas, some of these big football schools and basketball schools, even in the Northeast, there's a huge dedicated fan base that follows this stuff 
you know, daily, weekly, monthly, especially in times when transfer portal opens or when recruiting is, is, is really starting to take up, uh, especially at the end of the year in December, I think a lot for basketball and football. So there are really heavy pockets of people that are invested in this kind of news. And so when Joe and Hayes can take advantage of that, then they put out a graphic. I mean, it, they are breaking news to a point where they've got an automatic fan base demographic waiting to kind of engage with this. Right. Yeah. And they become the hubs of that information. And so, and yeah, that's, that's useful for both for fans, but also, yeah, maybe even for the schools who, you know, need a central news source and on three is in some ways become that, but um, yeah, you're, you're, you're just one beat closer to the source went through, through Joe and Hayes and maybe others. Um, are the schools interacting with, with them or with this whole ecosystem at all, or does this kind of happen separate from them? This is pretty separate. Um, this is something that I think a lot of schools probably looked at, though, and said, why aren't we doing more of this ourselves? So I would say in, in this span of time that Joe and Hayes have really started to rise, there are a lot of universities that have built out graphic design departments specifically for this purpose of recruiting and announcing exciting recruits to coming in or exciting transfers. So they kind of paved the way in a bit, and yet they've still been able to kind of keep their own business separate from a lot of the universities. But there is now, you know, some competing graphic design teams. And I think what's funny is that they've never really struck me as people that were so dedicated to graphic design as a, as a passion, right? You've heard that phrase, graphic design is my passion. I think that started out potentially uh, with them. But as they got more into this, I think the aspect of just being able to break news and be sports insiders intrigued them more than say, I'm going to be the most artistic and, and beautifully rendered kind of graphic designer there is. I think that's where universities can spend a little bit more of their effort and money. We're going to make this a really beautiful, pristine looking graphic. We're going to spend two weeks on it and make sure it looks great. I think theirs look interesting. They they have a bit of a gaudy feel to them. They're they're sometimes like bright colors, just kind of wacky collages. Um, but I think it works for high schoolers. I think they love that kind of uh, flash and, and pizzazz. But it but it does feel something where it is a little bit more rapid fire. Let's get this out at a breakneck pace. And so universities are kind of the middleman in that where they they're a little bit like, well, we're not going to break this news but we will take from what they're doing and, and make our own at a, at a more leisurely pace, perhaps, but also just more intense focus on the people we're hiring. Yeah. And that starts to speak to something I was wondering about all this, which is just why this is a centralized thing. I mean, why, why do these two guys have so much clout when I mean, you compared them to, to Woj and, and Shams or Woj and Schefter in your, in your piece? Um, because it feels like, um, a, a lot of people could do what they do just on, on the graphic design end of things. Um, it doesn't seem like, you know, it's, it's a skill. It's, it's a skill a lot of people have. Uh, but I guess it's, is it just that they are sort of the ones known for this specific thing, but also the ones kind of connected in that space and maybe the ones trusted with this information to, um, uh, you know, as opposed to, you know, just like posting it on a job board or something. And then, then you kind of, you know, scoop yourself. Um, yeah, is that did you get a sense of how they've kind of developed this this amount of weight and cloud in this area? Yeah, I think I think you're right. I think it's it's a mixture of they've been in this, they've been doing this now for such a, a long time that their name have kind of become synonymous with instant credibility. So you got a Hayes Fawcett graphic, well, now I know you're legit. You got a Tipton edit, which is Joe Tipton's uh, moniker, Tipton edits, right? So he kind of established this name for himself and they put it on every graphic. So you, you, even if you are a high schooler and you're going to Georgia and you've just committed, you have the Hayes Fawcett name on your graphic. And so it's this extra way of establishing who these guys are, but you know, they've gained a lot of followers, uh, thousands of followers on Instagram. And it's funny, I think Instagram is really where most of these high school and college kids are interested in uh, sharing these graphics. And they've been at an age, too, where they could really connect with a lot of these kids. So a lot of athletes, it's easy to slide into Hayes and Joe's DMs and work out some deal and figure out when they want to promote themselves. And they know the lingo. They know how to talk to these guys. And it's just, I think, by, by both 
you know, feeling like they're comfortable with who they are age wise and, and, and then also their, their credibility of doing this for a long time. They've now kind of gotten to this level where they are kind of the Schefter, Woj, Narowski kind of levels of, okay, we know these guys are trusted in this industry. Sure. Another kid could offer me a graphic, but if I post it with his edit, is anyone going to really glance an eye at this now? <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, it's still sort of a funny phenomenon to me when, even when I sort of put all the pieces together and, you know, there's, yeah, like the social media piece, obviously the, um, uh, the NIL part of it feels relevant, even if, you know, a step removed. I'm wondering if you had any thoughts around just what this whole phenomenon means about the world we live in today. It's, I, I'm getting, I, I guess in some ways it's a little, it's a little depressing only in the sense that everyone is so interested in their own individual narrative and story that they all feel deserving of a graphic. <laughs> um, you know, but I think this is just the new reality of, of college sports. I think the, I think what makes this story interesting and I think why Shannon Terry, who's in charge of on three has really invested in these guys. They just signed contract extensions uh, this past uh, spring is that they just, they are kind of on this kind of wave of college athletes coming in and needing and feeling like their brand is arguably more important than the school itself or the education or whatever. I mean, this is kind of the way that a lot of people are viewing, I think, college in general is it's just another stepping stone to the pros now that we can profit off our name, image, likeness. So it, it has, their business has weirdly dovetailed with the NIL. And I think it makes a lot of sense. So it's, yeah, it, it, on one sense, I think it is a little depressing, but it's also just, this is where college sports have been kind of going for a while now. I think ever since players have been vouching for themselves so hard. Yeah. And the other piece of, of that I'd throw in is just the transfer portal, how that's become such, um, you know, a, I mean, free agency is kind of the, the common uh, comparison, but um, but yeah, that is players saying like, you know, I'm, I'm doing okay at this school, but you know, maybe I'm a backup or maybe I'm just like, I, I could get more, more clout, more NIL money, more, you know, and maybe better coaching, a better experience, um, at a different school. And, um, and, 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 and so, yeah, I mean, that also just further separates the player from the school where it's, you're not just like joining this group that you are going to be with for the next however many years it's um you know um I've, this is my first school maybe it's my only school maybe it's not and but i have a separate brand from the school because that brand can travel yeah and i should also mention one thing that i think separates these guys too from from the rest is their ability to keep things confidential i think that's always been their bread and butter whenever they get information they sit on it they never let it leak I think that's been really the key to their success in a lot of ways is that players also trust that when they send them information about where they're going, uh, especially at transfer portals, which are crazy times and they're getting hit up, you know, by multiple players every day, every hour, a new graphic has to go out. I think that's where the credibility and trust goes into it. And I think that's what starts to separate them from even other, you know, veteran college sports journalists. Because it's funny, I, you know, as a journalist myself, you, you go into this business and you think about the ways that you want to break news and all the ethics that go into it. And then all of a sudden you see these two guys and just because they've been able to make some graphics, <laughs> it's just so easy for them to create relationships and build trust with players sometimes that takes years for, you know, a Pete Thamel or a John Rothstein to do. Yeah. Right. It's one of those things where it's like, yeah, there's people in you know, their forties or fifties who have been like, I have been like slowly developing these relationships over many years. And these two kids who are in their early twenties, who just started doing this as teenagers, all of a sudden, like they're the hubs. Um, and you know, that's, that's just the world we live in today, I guess. Uh, the piece is the new college sports insiders are graphic designers. Check it out on frontofficesports.com. Jake King Trifles, thanks so much for joining us on the show. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. That's it for today. Share this episode with the college sports fans in your life and make sure you're subscribed to the show. Thanks for listening. We will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow.